I do admit, there are heat pumps out there that just don't work very well. Join me on a mission of a real nightmare heat pump installation repair. We'll uncover reasons for this system failure, find solutions and try to see if we can salvage this 3 years old heat pump. Number one, insulation. This is internal insulation. This is not supposed to be uh, used outside. We don't see any antifreeze valves because this setup was running on glycol throughout the whole house and it's a large property. It's a 12 kilowatt heat loss. That wiring is not supposed to be uh, run externally. That needs to be protected. The location of the unit is far from ideal. I think it might cause circulation issues. So this is a really lovely way to install isolating valves. Very creative bending. So five stars for that. And now, oh, no insulation inside the wall, through the wall. Inside, inside's not much better. Let me show you. The plant room is right here. Primary pipe work from the heat pump is undersized. It's 28 millimeters uh, copper. On a 12 kilowatt unit, it should be 35 millimeters on that distance. And it splits upstairs for the central heating and goes down to the cylinder. All of that is 22 millimeters copper. That's undersized and also it's on S plan. So we've got uh, 22 millimeters two port valves, one here and one another one for the heating for the property. So what were the problems? The problems were uh, there was no circulation in the system or the unit was cycling, not giving enough energy to the radiators and radiators were pretty much half of them stone cold. The other half not reaching the uh, design temperature if there ever was a design temperature here, if anyone thought about it. And this is where the pipe work goes through the roof. The problem with this is that they've used plastic pipe work with push fit fittings. And people wrongly assume that 22 millimeter plastic is equivalent to 22 millimeters copper. Our 12 kilowatt heat pump needs 35 millimeters primaries on this job. So 35 millimeters copper or 40 millimeter MLCP or plastic pipe work. We have 22, so it's not one size down, two size down. How many sizes is that? That's 22. There, it's four sizes down. So that unit couldn't have worked here at all. Had literally no chances of performing uh, correctly. Resulting in a cold house and really high uh, electricity bills. So we're gonna run 35 mil copper from the unit to a new diverter valve here. And then from this diverter for heating, we're gonna run MLCP 32 mil pre-insulated pipe work. For 12 kilowatts, it should be 40 mil. However, I'm gonna run two sets of flow and returns. One for underfloor heating on the ground floor for about six kilowatts of heat loss and another six kilowatts on the first floor to the radiator is gonna be run again on 32 mil MLCP pre-insulated pipe work. Why pre-insulated? Because we're running it within a slab, within insulated slab within the insulation behind me and then we put uh, another layer of insulation on this pre-insulated pipe work. The clients were so cold last winter that we need to make sure they've got the most efficient, the warmest house possible. 100 mil spacing is the way to go if you want to have the lowest flow temperature, the highest heat output and the highest possible efficiency. But you have to size radiators upstairs to the same flow temperatures. I'm using just a garden hose to purge the water from all the underfloor heating loops. So the manifold is open, all the loops are open. Once the system is full of water everywhere, then I'm gonna connect my pressure testing pump and pressure test it to six bar. And outside, I'm ready to put the unit back. I've raised the base by about 250 millimeters. That should help with the airflow a bit. I've got my uh, pipe work sticking out of the wall, insulated in the wall. So, and the unit is already ready as well with antifreeze valve and two new flexible hoses attached to it as well. Up, 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 up. That's it. So the builder just came in and told me, oh, oh mate, we have a problem. Turns out that the pipework is higher than the finished floor level. As a matter of fact, we've got 60 mil here, but on the other end of the room, the pretty much floor level or the insulation level is the finished floor level. So the pipes would be sticking out uh, of the street. There would be no street here at all. So the builders have different ideas. They want to raise all the doors. That was initial idea. The other option is we lift all the pipe work. They correct the insulation and then we have to reinstall it.
Guys have an impossible task of putting those pipes where they used to be without removing them. Look at that! It's done! Actually, it looks better than what they originally done as well. <laughs> yeah. It was? Yeah, it was, yeah. It You've done it though, though, right? Yeah. And I think it looks better. <laughs> that will make the builder and the client super happy. Finally, they've got pipe work that will be below the screen, which is always a, you know, a good thing. And although we have relayed the underfloor heating pipe work now and lowered the insulation, I see the builders are still moving the doors up. It's not going well, is it? That zone valve has to go somewhere here. I have to bend small radius from that pipe coming out and then come back on itself. You could get it done with fittings, but you probably would be using 15 pounds worth of press fit fittings. And I can do it in about two minutes with a couple of bends. And it fits perfectly. Success! The unit's running on hot water, finally. And that's maximum output, three-year-old unit that was probably cycling like crazy, so it hasn't had the best life, this unit. While I was playing with the unit inside, uh, Marie and Simon, they've managed to finish uh, all the external insulation. This is Primary Pro for 35 millimeters copper. So the flow pipe work is really hot to the touch. This is already around 55 degrees return. Cool. So I've had this unit running on hot water now for a few hours and I've installed a taco setter, a device that shows the flow through the system and it doesn't register pretty much anything. I can't see any flow there. And we've got 35 millimeters primaries going from the unit all the way to the cylinder. I mean, they reduced to 28 on the diverter valve, but still I would normally expect to see around at least 30 liters flow through that, uh, through this system right now. I think we may have a problem with the partially blocked uh, plate heat exchanger on the unit itself because this system was, it was totally filthy. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect my power flusher, drop some FX2 in it and just run it through the unit and see if I can clear out any potential blockages on it. I've also fired the unit up to heat up the chemicals so they act quicker. And before that I disassembled the unit to have a look into the hoses. Those ones here, they were slightly dirty but not blocked, so not what I was expecting. So the water coming out from the unit is kind of brownish but it's not black. Well, let's see if it improves the flow rate. So we've got all new pipe work. We've cleaned the filter yesterday, run the heat pump overnight, and this is what I got inside the filter. I think the plate must be blocked. And I just realized, thanks to good people of Twitter, that this is a flow meter as well, and you can read the value. One cubic meter per hour, which is around 20 liters a minute. That is half of what I need. I know the primary pipe work is fine. So obviously the first thing to check was this strainer filter on this valve. Although the system is new and it's been flushed, there must be tons of stuff inside the heat pump. But taking the strainer out doesn't change the flow. It still only gets me around 20 liters a minute. There must be blockage somewhere else. I suspect it's the plate heat exchanger in the unit or maybe lazy pump. Well, I have to keep looking because this system will not perform with those flow rates. It won't be able to provide enough energy to the property or run at high efficiencies.